Well, good morning, everybody. And today, today we are starting uh, uh, with the last topic of the course. That is um, control experiments. Let me check. Doesn't seem to work. Okay. Yeah, let's let's wait. Um, so control experiment. That is actually the, the very last topic of the course. Hmm? We will dedicate three hours to control experiment, and then we will have in January one exercise on control experiment, and then the course is over. Essentially, we will have still one lab and we will have an exam simulation, but as topic, this is really the last one. So, as a recap, we already mentioned control experiment when we spoke about usability testing. And we said that usability testing was the kind of evaluation that um, told us, oh, let's find someone that is going to use our app, let's give this person some tasks and see from the feedback how we can improve the, um, the, the, the application, which usability error, which usability mistakes we can get from, from this kind of evaluation. And we said it is clearly observation driven and anecdotal is hmm? mostly because it's all oh, let's get again a bunch of people and let's try our application hmm? in various parts according to various tasks measuring some metrics in control experiment we instead move to a more scientific and hypothesis driven approach hmm? so we don't want to have a bunch of people testing our application in general with some task for getting mm, usability error, usability mistakes. We want to verify something very, very specific. We want to verify if participants of our study if users of our application perform a specific task better, faster, with less error, etc., mm, one of these better than another version of application, another application like ours, etc. Mm. So we are, we control experiment comparing two different things two versions of the application, two different buttons in the application, w our application with another application, but in a specific mm, series of tasks and with some, mm, and with some measurable outcome. faster, with less error, etc. Something that we can measure quantitatively and count in a way. Mm? So not just getting information, getting feedback, but again, making a parallel between two things and saying which one is better. And this better is something that we measure systematically precisely we can measure with some numbers mm? so this is the main difference between usability testing and control experiment mm? comparison specific task and specific metric specific measurement quantitative and again measurable mm? why there is th this difference because this is scientific 
we are going in control experiment, we use statistics to see, to say if yes, my application is faster than the other. Hmm? Not because these five people that tested the application say, say so, but we because we have data that can be generalized to a certain extent, and those data told us that there is actually a difference, and this difference is significantly di different in, in speed, let's say, from the other version of the application or the other application, et cetera, that we are comparing to. And this is not only scientific, but also hypothesis driven. In control experiment, we formulate an hypothesis. We make a hypothesis that our to-do application is faster than another application or another version of the application. And this is our hypothesis. This is our bet. Mm? And we want to demonstrate that bet in general. So, <coughs> which are the three main steps of control experiment? Mm -hmm. They are actually the same of usability testing. We need to plan the study, we need to run the study, and then we need to analyze the results. Mm -hmm. And the running phase is not much different from the usability testing. The planning is slightly different. Because again, we need to formulate this hypothesis. We need to, un to choose what we want to compare with our application or one version with another version. A set, a page with another page, with another version of the same page, mm? etc. And also the analysis phase is different. Mm? We don't have questionnaire in control experiment. We can have questionnaire in control experiment just as another way of getting more information, but it's not something that go in mm, the uh, analysis, the outcome of the specific hypothesis that we are making. Mm? And which are, mm, uh, as an overview, mm, the aspects of the control experiment. So again, control evaluation, we are going to evaluate specific aspects, and sorry if I repeat this for I don't know how many times, the specific aspects of some interactive behavior. And this happens typically in a lab. Doesn't happen in the wild, doesn't happen in the real world. Hmm? Sometimes happens also in the real world. If you have a very large base and you want to um, understand the difference between your application with one button and the same application with another button, another version of the same button. Mm? So if you are Facebook, you can do this kind of, of testing, just updating the application for some user and not updating, mm? updating to not the very same version of other user and then you can compare data, you can collect data according to the behavior mm? of users. Um, this again is based on an hypothesis to be tested, or better, a null hypothesis to be confuted. Mm? And, and we are going to see this. And we also can should consider different conditions. Mm? We can consider different conditions. Mm? We will have different kind of variables that we can control in a in a control experiment. Mm, that's why it's called control, because we have variables that we can control and things that we measure that we have full control, try to have full control on it. Mm? So how the planning of a control experiment go? Mm? So first of all, you need to choose clearly what you want to study. It's not let's evaluate the entire application. It's formulate a narrow and testable question that you want to answer. Is my application faster than the other? 
narrow and testable. We can test if it's faster or not. We can measure time. Here's replacing the test, the text of this button in my application produce more engagement, more signing in. Mm, let's say that you have an application with a login button. Mm, it's replacing this login text with another text. Will make more people log in to the application or not? Mm, and more people is something that we can test. We can count how many people click on login in the application with the login text. And we count how many people clicked on the login text instead in another version of application. Narrow, just the login button is changing. It's not everything that is changed. Hmm? And testable, we can count. So these are really fundamental things for a control experiment. Then we have, so decide what we want to study. Then we have to formulate that in an hypothesis in terms of which are the variables that we are putting in place which are the measures that we are going to measure. Hmm? So, for instance, for the login, the measure, for the login example, the measure will be counting how many people will click on that button. Hmm? Then we need to select the participants. Hmm? As for the usability testing, consent form, etc. Uh, then we need which experimental method we are going to use. Mm. And there are two main experimental methods that we can use. Then, according to all the things before, we need to write a task. That will be one task or multiple tasks mm, to give our participant to actually pro prove mm, our hypothesis. Mm. Or better, to disprove the null hypothesis. That is actually, for now, let's keep that the null hypothesis the opposite of the hypothesis. Mm. And then, finally, decide, and this is in the planning already, decide which statistical test we are going to use for analyzing the result. Mm. Because control experiments are evaluated, are analyzed with statistical tests. And the decision of a specific statistical test can impact mm, what we can or cannot do before. Mm, so some statistical tests cannot really be applied to have consistent results with a uh, low number of participants. So if you don't have too much participants, you cannot use mm, with, with a reasonable confidence some statistical test. So, uh, before continuing uh, and going deep in all these uh, stages or the most important things like participants, hypothesis, experimental methods, and tests, uh, how confident you are, how much confident you are with statistics? Well, let's say in this way. Mm, when you think to statistics, one, you scream and run away, and five, you say, oh, yes, very nice. I'm happy. Let's have a party about statistics. One and five. Number? One, two. OK. Um, good. <laughs> so we, we are actually not going to, to go too much in deep mm, on statistics here. We, we will need probably a different course for going deep in all statistical methods. We just mention some of them, and we will um, present well with an exercise I was mentioning before, in January, one of them. Very, very simple, that you can also compute and apply on, on paper mm, with, with just a uh, calculator without any fancy, mm, complex uh, equation or something like that. Mm. But there are some terms that derive from the statistic world that we are trying to introduce mm, here for understanding this. Maybe not in the most precise mathematical sense, but for what I it's needed to understand these and apply these successfully in general. This was a warning. So, which are, mm, let's start from these 
list. Hmm? We need to, we, we sort of understood with these narrow and testable questions. Hmm? So we need to have something very specific and something measurable for our experiment. We don't know hmm, now uh, what is this hypothesis and how to formulate it. We don't know how many participants do we need and we don't know these experimental methods nor the statistical test. So we are going to see these uh, three, these four factor now. Hmm? So let's start from participants. Participants in control experiment uh, are also called subjects, which is a, not a nice word, so I, we, we typically prefer participants, but a subject is also something that you can find related to control experiment, uh, because a control experiment are used in human-computer interaction. But when they tested vaccine, they did a control experiment. Hmm? When they tested in phase one, phase two, etc., vaccine for COVID, for instance. But not only. Hmm? So some people get a vaccine and other people get a placebo. Hmm? So nothing, essentially. And they measured how many people got the disease, how many people had reaction, how many people died. They, were, they had a very specific narrow question, is this vaccine effective or not? And they measured the effectiveness with specific measurement. Hmm? To compute the effectiveness, the how many people died, etc., etc. So that was a control experiment. That is something that in medicine it's used. It's the same thing, just a different and more sensitive domain than not people interacting with computer in most cases. So this is actually something that is has span across discipline. Hmm? So we are seeing this more from our perspective, from the human computer interaction perspective, but the same thing hmm? apply, let's say, to medicine, to psychology, to other domains. We're also different with that. When we want to have an hypothesis, verify the hypothesis with people. So when there are these three things, we can have control experiment. And again, medicine is one of the places, one of the field where these are widely used hmm? in all the tests for all kind of medicine, hmm? so all kind of drugs, not only vaccine, all drugs have some sort of control experiment. Hmm? Close parenthesis. Uh, participants. Participants are clearly vital to the success of any experiment, not only this, but also for this. And we need a sufficient and representative sample for our specific narrow and testable question. Hmm? As we can have for other kind of experiment in which we recruit people. Hmm? For clear, our target population should be the target population, the intended target population mostly. And it should be sufficient, it should be large enough. So the, the role of thumb for the size of the population for controlled experiment is at least, hmm, and let me stress this, at least double the number that you would recruit for usability testing. And this number is? Five for usability testing, so at least double. Ten. Okay. Um, so at least ten people. Hmm? But I said it before, some statistical test needs more than ten people to work well. So it's not uncommon to have control experiments in human-computer interaction with 30 participants hmm? or 40 participants. 25 participants, so also those numbers are very pretty common in human-computer interaction. Also, it depends actually from the kind of experimental methods that we are going to use. Mm, for some experimental methods, we need more participants. For how the experimental methods work, mm, we, we are going to see this, but for let's, let's give a preview. Mm. For between subject experimental methods, you need more participants than for within subject experimental methods. 
for how they are built or how they work. So typically for between subjects, study you need double the, the number of people that you will have for doing the same experiments with a within subject, hmm? experimental method. So, but at least, let's say 10. That is the very bare minimum. Hmm? Um, and also remember this subject versus or participants. Hmm? So when we speak about between subject method, we mean between participants, between people. So just remember this. And this is one of the things. Let's say the, the easiest one, people. We know how to recruit people, we know how to identify target population, etc. There are other two factors that are fundamental here that we mentioned already before. The hypothesis. The hypothesis is the prediction of the outcome of the study. Our bet, we bet that our version one of the application is faster than version two. This is how we, we put, let's say, the effort hmm, on what we would like to demonstrate. And this hypothesis that could be framed initially in something like that, hmm, as I said before, our application, our version application, our version of the button is creating more engagement, is creating less error, is creating something hmm, than another version. That is our hypothesis. We bet that our version A of the application is, let's say, faster than version B of the same application. Hmm? The change may be for very few parts because it should be a narrow question. So this is our hypothesis. This is the hypothesis that we make, starting from the narrow and testable question. Again, keeping in mind always that it should be narrow and that the things that we measure should be measurable. Mm? So if we speak about speed, it's fine because we can measure speed. If we say that our application should be, should be is uh, our version application, version one is more engaging the version two, we need to specify a way to measure engagement, not opinion, but quantitative way to measure engagement. What is engagement? Is the number of click? Is the time that a person stay on the page versus the time that the same uh, another person, the same person stay on the on the, on the same page on the other application? Mm? We need to have a way to measure this engagement in some way. One or more way to measure this engagement. Mm? And all of these, mm? engagement, like, equal, speed, time on deprecation, etc. and the fact that we have one user interface with two versions, are what, in the hypothesis, are called variables. Mm? So things that we can manipulate and measure to verify, to test our hypothesis. We measure, for, for the engagement example, we measure, let's say, the number of click. So the number of click is a variable because we can measure it. We measure the time that the user is, spend, is spending on the single page. And the time is something that we measure, so that is a variable because we measure that. And the user interface is also variable because of the thing that we manipulate. We gave our participants version one and version two. We manipulate which kind of user interface our participant will see. Some will see version one and some will see version two. So also that is a variable because we manipulate that variable. We change the things that participants see. Uh, if you have, uh, some, some of these things are not really simple to grasp, I, I know. Uh, so if you have any question at any moment, hmm, 
don't matter if you think that are good question or bad question, just ask. It's better to answer a bad question now that, a question that you think is bad now, that bringing a, a, a problem, a doubt, in all, all, all over the, the, the rest of the semester. Mm? So everything is clear up to now. We will see it in a moment. Mm. With some example, yeah, that is. Mm. So but I in general, we add a hypothesis, like my application is faster than the other, and the null hypothesis is the opposite. It's saying there is no difference between my application and the other. Mm. Because this statistical method try, often the statistical method try to find a difference where it is. Mm. So we would like to disprove the hypothesis that the two application or the two version application are equal because we want to that one is better than the other in some way so in that sense it's the opposite but we we have example of that for sure anything else okay so before going to hypothesis let's speak about variables that are fundamental for hypothesis and there are also uh, factors in this okay not factors um, specifics in these variables mm. so we have two kind of variables mostly two kind of variables for control experiment we have the independent variables and the dependent variables or variables mm. we can have multiple independent variables and multiple dependent variables. So which are the independent variables? The independent variables are the element that we are going to manipulate or that we control to produce different condition for our comparison. So in the example before, which we said we have two version of the same page of the application, in these two version, the, the application, the user interface, is the independent variable. Mm? Because it's something that we manipulate. At a certain point, we change which is the user application. Mm? So that is called the independent variable. It's also called factor. Mm? Saying this is a factor of the experiment, or this is the independent variable of the experiment, is the same thing. So example of independent variable, the style of the interface. An interface with a certain style and the same interface with another style. The number of menu, menu item. We have menus and would like to understand whether a menu with three items produce less error than a menu with seven item in it. Mm -hmm. Menu. And only the menu is changing, it's not everything that is changing. Or the icon design. Mm? So again, something that we change, manipulate according to our question. Mm? And each of these independent variables can have different values in it that are called levels. Mm? So in our example of the user interface with two versions to use, how many level do we have? We said that the user interface that we are changing is our independent variable, the page is our independent variable, and we had two version of that. Mm. Version one and version two. So how many level do we have? Two level, okay? Because we have two version. Mm. And these are independent variables things that we manipulate with one or more level. Typically, it's at least two, otherwise we cannot make a comparison. But it could be also three, four, five. And then we have the dependent variables. So often, the independent variable, we have one or two independent variables. So the things that we manipulate, otherwise it will be, you can understand, we, we, can have a, we can have a real mess because we have maybe two interface and then in two interface we have another variable that change and then in this other variable we have another things that change it, it become complex so 
typically we have two, three independent variable per experiment. You can have more, but in practice you can have, you typically have one to three, more often one and or two. And then you can have all the dependent variables basically that you need. And the dependent variables are the things that we are measuring. Hmm? And they're called dependent because their value or the thing that we measure is dependent hmm, on the change that we make in the independent variable. Hmm? So when we give user interface, interface version one, we measure, let's say, time. And that time is dependent from the fact that there is user interface one or user interface two in front of the user, in front of the participant. So it depends on the, the type, hmm, the level of the independent variable. Hmm. So this is called dependent. But it's, it's it, it, uh, there are the things that we measure, actually. Hmm. So not things that we manipulate, but things that we measure. So examples of this could be the time taken, the number of errors, the number of clicks, etc. Things, again, that we can measure. And in usability testing, we call this dependent variable, we add the dependent variable also there. We call that measures, the things that we measure. Hmm? Here we, we can call it, we, we need to call it dependent variable. And these are the two main type of variables in control experiment. They are not the only type of variable. We will see other three type of variables. But these are the two main variables to start with a control experiment. Hmm? Dependent variables, the things that we control, manipulate, dependent variables, the things that we measure. Hmm? And then could be one or more, clearly. So let's make an example, just to see if we all understand. Mm -hmm. So let's have this question, this let's say hypothesis. Mm -hmm. We want to verify if the user of our application perform a task faster, with fewer error, whatever, than our competitor app. Mm -hmm. So which is the independent variable, which is the dependent variable, the things in yellow or the things in, in green? So the things in yellow are the independent variables and consequently the things in, in green are the dependent variables. Okay. So another example, slightly more complex. We want to test so our hypothesis, not null hypothesis for now, it's our real hypothesis, our question, the bet that we say we have. We want to test whether the selection speed in a menu improves as the number of menu items decrease. Mm? So what we are saying, and let's try to, to do this. Mm? So what we are saying is that if we have a menu, just a menu, we don't care about the rest of the application. We could also not have an application. We just could have just a menu. We have a three item menu. Mm? Mm? We want to test selection speed in a menu improve as the number of items decrease. Mm? So we want to, we, we are saying that here in a three menu item, selection of one of these items is faster than in a, let's say, five menu item. Which is, again, faster than, let's imagine, just three levels. Here in this hypothesis, it's not specified, hmm? right, how many 
menus we have, but let's say three. Mm? One with three, one with four, five, and one with seven, for instance. This is one and this is seven. So we are saying that our bet is that selecting, let's say, the third element here is faster than selecting any other element in these other two menus. And we have less time in menu three than menu five with five items. And the menu with five items is actually faster in the selection of a single element than menu seven, no matter which is in this case, the element mm, that we are going to select. Mm. So let's say we want to select always the last one. Mm. And we say so the task is selecting the last item. Mm. And we would, it, our hypothesis is that selecting the item three, five and seven, in this three menu, mm, selecting three is faster than selecting five, is faster than selecting seven. And we can have another task that say, okay, select the first one. And our hypothesis say that selecting the first one in the first menu is faster than the second and is faster in the, than in the third. Mm. And the other hypothesis could be select one in the middle. So the other task could be select one in the middle. So select the number two here, number three here, and number five in the seven item menu. Mm. We have these three tasks. We measure time for these three tasks because we want, we our bet is that Selection here is faster than selection in the five item that is faster than selection in the seven. Mm -hmm. So the, the three menu item is the fastest one and the seventh one is the lowest one. Mm -hmm. So let's do, so this is the picture where we are. Mm -hmm. Let's do this game again. In this hypothesis, mm -hmm. in this question, which are the independent variables? Dependent variables are not the number of menu item, but are is the is the menu. Yeah, is the menu item that's changing, and the number. So here, let's say the menu. And each independent variable, so each menu, each change menu has how many level? In this case, of three different menu. So here, the description, again, is not specify how many menu we have. Mm? But here, we just depicted three, and we can say three. Mm? If we have five, we just have five level. But it's one independent variable, the menu, mm, that change the, the length of its item initially. And notice here, it's narrow as a question. We don't care which is the content of this menu in this hypothesis. We just want to see the length and the selection time. Another totally different things that we can experiment is, I don't know, if the length of the sentence in a menu item, mm, so we say in a, uh, we want to test whether selection speed in a menu improves as the number of menu items decrease and the wording of each item is shorter. The words are shorter, so the length of words are shorter. And so we can combine more than one thing if we want. Or we can say we want to test whether selection speed in a menu improve as the number of letters in menu items are shorter. These are other hypotheses, other questions, other experiments, not this one. They are different. We need to do another control experiment if we want to test that hypothesis. So that's why it's narrow, because we are going to test one thing at a time, or a couple of things at a time, but only those, not everything else. Uh, here, the dependent variable is our selection speed that we can count in seconds. Yeah, let's say seconds because it's, it's the person that's going to click, so probably second. Mm. Okay, and these are actually the, 
the same thing that we, we just brought. Mm? So independent variable is the number of menu items that we have, so the changes in menu items, um, so the changes in the menu, and uh, we consider menu items with three, five, and seven items, we have three levels. The dependent variable is the speed of the menu item selection co counted in seconds. Hopefully, seconds is, is good enough. Okay, so this is independent and dependent variable. Let's add another concept, that is the concept of the condition, the experimental condition. So we said we have the three menu item and we give tasks. Select the third one, select the last one, select the first one, select the one in the middle of each menu. The experimental condition is the task execution during the experiment. And each level of an independent variable requires one experimental condition to test. We are going to select the last element in a menu, in the first menu, in the second menu, and in the third menu. And this is the same thing that we are going to repeat three times. So we have three menus with three, five, and seven items, so we have three experimental conditions. Mm? One per each level, mm? because we have to repeat the task three times. We have to do have the same task three times. Mm? Uh, and if we have experimental complex experiment with more than one independent variable, each one with their own level. Mm? So we can have the menu that has three levels and another independent variable that are four levels, two levels. Mm? So we, we need, it's possible. Mm? And experimental condition should account for all combination of levels. Mm? So in this case, we have one independent variable, three levels, and we have three experimental conditions. If we have two independent variables. So let's do the, the same game again. This is the same hypothesis of, of before, slightly changed. We still want to test whether selection speed in a menu improve as the number of menu item decrease. And this is the same as before. But we have an addition here. And text or icons are used as label in the menu item. So we still have the menus before. Three item menu, five item menu, and seven item menu. But here we are adding one thing. We're adding a variable. Hmm? Let's say the, the content of those items could either be only text or text plus icon. So we are adding something to the same experiment, to the, sing the single experiment. We are not going to have another experiment with just label, but we are adding this condition, let's say here. So how many independent variables do we have here? menu as before and whether it is a text or an icon two independent variables how many level do we have for the first independent variable always three because it's, it's the same as before so we said we have three five and seven item menu and for the second independent variable how many level do we have text and icon. Hmm? So we are adding, we have, again, to, to repeat, one independent variable is the menu item, the length of the menu, how many items are in the menu, 
because it's something that we manipulate in experiments. We give part we gave participants we give participants first the three item menu, then the five, and then the seven. But here we also are interested in the level, textual or not. Let's si let's simplify with textual or not in this moment. Um, so when we give the three item menu, we are going to give first the three item menu with level that are only text. And then we are going to give another three item menu with the labels that are not only text, but text plus item. Then we are going to have the five item menu with label in text first and then label in icon plus text and then the same things for um, uh, the seven item menu. So in the end, how many conditions do we have? Six. Mm -hmm. Because we have three levels for the first one, two level for the second one. So overall, we have six conditions. So if we here have, let's imagine that this is a, a, an actual table. So here, and we are doing the experiment. So here, how an experiment could unfold. This is one way in which the experiment, this experiment could, could be run. Not the only one, but one of the many. We could have, let's say, a bunch of participants, 20 participants, 30 participants, and we are measuring time. We are measuring speed. So, and let's, let's do this in this linear way. We will see that this is not the only way to do mm, this thing. But just for the sake of this example, let's do this in a linear way. So you are the facilitator, and you are going to give participant number one, first of all, the three item menus with text or label. First experimental condition. And the participant number one will end a task. Click or a set of tasks. Let's say one task only, just for, again, for the example, for simplicity. Mm? And the task is select the last element of the menu every time. Mm? So, or, or maybe better. Select the since we have a text plus le plus icon, select the menu item um, that will allow you to I don't know change color, whatever it is, so that we we can have some content for which the icon and the text could, could have a meaning and just not just the last one for which we don't care if this text or not. So let's say this one. Hmm? We have a task to select one of these, uh, uh, these items. And so we give participant number one. First of all, participant number one will see the three item menu with all the labels just text. And it will take, let's say, three seconds. These are just random numbers that I'm going to put here. And then participants does his task and then we say okay thank you this is another menu and we give participants the three menu item with label plus text plus icon as the label and we measure the same time we did we do the same task and this person make i don't know five seconds here and then we say thank you and we continue so what is the next step to you what we are going to do to give to the participant now? Five menu item with text or label. And we give the same task, and let's say that is seven. And then what we give to participants? Text or label for icon in the five menu item and 
So this participant is very, very good and is actually just respecting our hypothesis with a, a split of two seconds every time. Um, so we, we gave all of these in this order. Mm? And so we have six conditions in the app. Six we, we take six, because major and the participant does the task six times mm? in this linear way. That again, let me repeat this. This is just one possible way to, to run the experiment, the linear one, mm? in which our participants do everything. Mm? And all participants do everything in the same order. This is just for the sake of this example. This is not exactly what we can do. Mm? So this is one way to run the experiment. Uh, do you have in mind another way to run the experiment with these six conditions? If you want to draw another table, like these, but not identical to these, really. Inverted. Exactly. We can invert. So let's try to draw it here. So we have just one table with two. That is sex and sex plus icon and here for each of these we have the three conditions so the three items menu the five the seven and then again the three the five the seven in the end, we have the same condition, exactly. And the participants, if we move in this linear way, will see the same thing. At a certain point, we'll see the three item menu with text. And in another moment, we'll see the three item menu with label, with text plus icon. So in the end, the experimental condition will be the same. Which is to you the difference? If we go in this linear way, which is the difference between these two way of proceeding for the participants in, uh, under the perspective of the participants? No idea at all? the time that the participant is spending oh but let's say that the, the our participant is very very diligent and uh, it takes uh, three seven so this is the one so the exact time three seven seconds here these are seconds uh, what is eleven and here, five, nine, and 13. So let's say the participant is very, very diligent <laughs> and uh, repeats the experiment exactly. So the same participant will, will produce, that is impossible, but so let's say let's produce the, the same results twice. So that's not a problem in measuring. Yes, that is the difference, it's not an error. So the difference, you, you said, just to error repeating, you said the participant in the second case already have seen all the variation of the menu, three, five, and seven. So 
So when he comes here, he already knows, right, that he will expect to have a three, five, and seven because it's what he had before. Hmm? This is what you yeah. So this is this is this is right. This is what changed between one and the other. But this is not an error hmm? because here the same things happen just for the other variables. In the first table, hmm, participants see the three item menu with text and label. And then we'll see the five item menu with text and label. So when you give them the seven item menu, guess what? You will give a textual item and a textual plus icon. So the same uh, learning I is already here. It's, it's also here, just not in the menu item, but in the label. So here, there is here is, is the difference between the two, essentially. Mm? The fact that the user, the participants, has, is learning something about the experiment in a different way. Here, mm, when it comes to the second, let's say, in independent variable, already knows that he will have, the participant will have three item menu, five item menu, and seven item menu. It doesn't know that you will have text plus icon. In the first case, mm, he, the participant probably will not know if after the five item menu will have a seven item menu or a nine item menu or a six item menu. But for sure, the participants know that we'll have a version with text and a version with icon plus text. Mm, so there is a learning effect. The participant is learning how to use the system during the evaluation. And that could, in some cases, when you have a pool list, a pool table with all the 20 participants, be a problem. Because here in the last condition, the participants know the task, all the tasks. Because, because the participants already did when when the participants see the year, hmm? the participants already did the same task four times. The very same task four times. So it, there is a learning. Uh, the participants already know what you are going to ask him. Because you did the same thing for four times now. So it's nothing new here. And same things for the other table, clearly. So there is this learning effect. Mm. So if we if we have a learning effect, mm, for which after the fourth time that we the participants did the task, the time decreased, but not because not due to the effect of the item or the textual label, but just to the fact that the, the participant is learning, is doing things quickly because already knows how to what to look for, because the task is the same. Then you can have a result that, for instance, the five, seven item menu is faster than the three item menu. But not because seven is better than three, but just because the participants learn how to do. So can forecast what you're going to, to ask, and it will be quicker to do that if you measure time. Mm? So th there could be in all control experiments, in all experiments, actually, also in the usability testing, in a way. This is a learning effect. The participant is learning to do things so that it becomes quicker to do things mm, because already understand the structure, already understand how to do things, already understand where to look for. Mm. So this could happen also for usability testing, actually. There is less of a problem because you also have, you mostly are interested in usability error and you mostly have, you also have qualitative information. And you have a server, etc. Here, you're relying a lot on statistics. So you don't want to have data that are, have a bias in it with this learning effect. And you cannot know when you plan a test whether there will be a learning effect, significant or not, important or not, stronger or not. You, you cannot know. If we are doing this experiment, we, how we can know if here we will have our, our learning effect or not? 
and this learning effect will be so strong that it will change the results in the study. So we don't know, but we will need to prevent this to happen. Maybe not for the single participants, but for all participants together, we can have some strategies, like reordering the, the condition. So one participant will see three menu items, seven, five, and seven, another participant will see seven, five, and three. So that you are trying to minimize hmm, the learning effect among different conditions, changing the order. The other things that I would like to say in these this slides is that actually here I wrote for participant number one a very good participant for our hypothesis. Because clear participant number one is saying, oh yes, the three item menu with text label label is as way better than everything else because it's faster. So we, we know actually from HCA theory that this condition should be better, should be clear at least. Maybe not faster, but truly clear. Mm? Adding together text plus images, icons, res with respect to only text or only icon. Maybe here it doesn't emerge, because this year we're just measuring speed. Mm? But maybe we can have participant number two that we'll have, I don't know, like this. So three, three, five, four, six, fifteen. So here, yes, we can probably say that, mm, what we can say, if we just look at participant number two, we cannot really say particip the, the three item menu in the text, in the text or label condition is the fastest one. Because actually, the same participant took three seconds for also the text of plus label, plus icon. And it took only five, four in the five item menu. So just one second of difference. Is this difference strong enough to say that the three item menu is better, is faster than the others? And then we will have other participants mm, that will have other measurement, other numbers. What we are going to, to do with, for instance, with the statistical test is to understand whether or not these differences between numbers that we measure mm, from actual participants planning a well done study. So considering the, this learning effect and trying to minimize this learning effect, for instance, in planning the study, mm, if these numbers are really different, or they are just here by chance. Mm? In other way, if we took, let's say, 10 participants, and with these 10 participants, we have that the three item menu is uh, faster than the textual label. If we get other 30 participants, the same amount of participants, but just different people, we will get results that say that the three item menu in the textual label is always the fast, so we can generalize the result from this bunch of people to, let's say, the general population or not. Mm? So this is what we want, in a way, to discover. We want to discover whether these differences among these 30 participants is strong enough to say, yes, there is a real difference, or not. There is not a real difference, just by chance that we get this number. You will need probably more people, more experiment to understand if there is or not a difference. If three is better than seven for speed mm, in this moment. Mm. But again, the first table and the second table are equivalent for the, the experiment. To just change which is the first independent variable and which is the second independent variable. With this learning effect that happens in both cases. So another question, I, I would like to go very quick uh, on this since 
you say that on statistics you you scream um, to get one or two. Um, so how many independent variables we can have in a control experiment? So in theory, a number that you choose. So any number, 10, 11, 15, just, we can just add a, a other end. We want to test whether selection speed in a menu improves as the number of menu items decrease and these and that and these other things. We can write and, right? It's, it's a test. We can specify mul multiple uh, conditions in this case, multiple restrictions, adding things. And then we are going to generate a table like this that is a little bit bigger hmm? because we have three menu items in the textual label and in the levels of the third uh, independent variable. And then in the first level of the third in the, the independent variable, we will have the level, the first, the all the level, the fourth independent variable. So this table will become increasingly large. So we, but we can mm, do that. We can pick up a big piece of paper and write all the tables that we want. So we can do it on a computer so that we don't have this problem. So we can depict all the tables that we want. But is there an upper limit? To, to make things working, still working. So we can actually, again, add independent variables. Uh, yes, there is an upper limit. Mm. Uh, and this upper limit is actually one or two independent variables, mostly three. Mm. So more than three independent variables will produce results that are dif difficult to understand and prove if your hypothesis is verified or not. A and why? These one, two, three are the magic number, let's say in this case. So often is one or, often actually is one or two. Mm? So probably 90% of the case, one or two independent variable. In some cases, you can also have experiment with three with four is just extremely rare and with a lot of limitation in between or special cases. With more than four is extremely rare. I probably never see more than four experiment independent variable. Mm? And notice we are speaking about independent variable. This doesn't apply for dependent variables for which we can have all the dependent variables that we want because it's something that we measure. But again, it should be narrow because we are going to test a specific hypothesis. So why we shouldn't have more than one to three independent variables? So quickly, the problem is around the effect, mm, what's called effect. So it's we, we can start from this definition quickly. Mm. Uh, so an experiment with one independent variable includes a main effect on the dependent variable. So, which is the fact we are measuring time, and this is the fact on the single level of the dependent variable. Hmm? If we have two independent variables, as in the case here, hmm? as in this case, two independent variables, we have two main effects. Hmm? Because the dependent variable produces an effect both for the length of item plus textual label and produce an effect also for the length mm, of item plus so one effect for each separately. Mm. So these three, so the two effects separately, one for the first independent variable and one for the second independent variable. We are measuring time. But here we also have one interaction effect that is called two way. Mm. That is the interaction effects that put together the first and the second independent variable. Mm. So in other term, just intuitively, is this three or this five mostly due to the textual level or to the length of the menu? This is 
this number is the result of the interaction between these two variables. Mm? But it's led by the three item menu or it's led by the fact that it's a text and not an icon. So there is this interaction between the two independent variables. And, and this is a question that we cannot really answer now looking at this table in a specific way. We cannot say, oh no, yes, this three is 99% due to the three item menu. And we don't care about the other independent variable. We cannot say this right here. So this is the interaction effect. So when you have two, and it's something that is measurable, uh, defined, so you can have a number that represents the interaction effect. But again, a bit lot of topic. But just to say, with two independent variables, you have three effects to consider. Each of them has an effect on the dependent variable, plus there is the joint effect. Look at what happened with three independent variables you still have a three main effects on the dependent variable. One for each, uh, the contribution, let's say, of each independent variable on the dependent variable, separately. But then you also have four interaction effects. Mm? So how one impacts the other. And we have four because it's computed in three two-way interaction effect and one three-way. So, independent variable one with two, the second with third, the third, and the first with the third. And this is the three to way. And then you have an interaction effect that put together the first with the second with the third. So you have seven effects to consider when reasoning about your results. So you already can imagine that these effects have an impact on the results on the description, on the analysis of the results. So you have seven things to keep in mind, to consider, to evaluate, okay, there is an interaction effect. There is, is one of these independent variables leading the results or they are contributing in the same way, let's say. So this is something that, because if there is one that is leading and the other two are useless, then probably there is some, some problem with the result because you are actually evaluating more one independent variable than the other two. Hmm? But still you have seven. Look what happens with four. You have 14 effects. So the number already double with respect to only seven of the three. So if you have more than five, the four, you have hmm, this number probably 20, 30 effects to consider your results. So in the end you have too many effects and too many variables. And these effects could uh, impede you to complete the analysis, to reach to a uh, result from your hypothesis, to prove or disprove your hypothesis, because there are too many things that are running in parallel there. You say, yes, this is the speed of the three item menu is faster than the seven item menu, because you have too many variables, too many effects to consider. Hmm? So to avoid this, you can do it mathematically, but to avoid this and to have experiments that can reach a result in a consistent way, mm, what you do is limiting the number of independent variables to one to three. And if you want, because you need to consider more independent variables, what you do in practice is running multiple controlled experiments. One with the first two independent variables, and another one with the other two independent variables. Maybe one is shared or with the other three independent variables. So you run multiple texts in, par in parallel, in sequence, so that you can say, yes, this is an effect here and this is not an effect here. So you're splitting the problem from a bigger one to many, let's say many, more than one smaller problem. So just keep in mind this, even without remembering interaction effects or not, that one to three is um, the, the, the good number, the upper limit, mm, with three being very the upper limit for uh, independent variables. And this doesn't apply to dependent variables. Mm. 
Then speaking about variables, we have actually other three type of variables. So the dependent and independent are the most fundamental one, the main one. But we have other three variables that we can consider and we can try to control in some way, in some cases. It also depends on what we are going to, to do in our control experiment. So while in a control experiment we will always have independent and dependent variables, these could or could not be present. Or do you want, or better, we want to control and consider them or not. And these three type of variables are control variables, random variables, and compound variables, that is in the next slide. Mm -hmm. So control variables are variables that may influence the dependent variable, but they are not under investigation. So you don't care about the result measuring this type of variable but they can be controlled. Mm? That's why they call control variables. So they are always fixed, typically, on a specific setting during the experiment. So for instance, the size of a display could be a control variable. You are doing the experiment with a 24 inches monitor. And all participants in all the condition will do the experiment with the same size of the monitor. Mm? And this could be a control variable, mm? a variable that you control, you fix at the beginning. Because maybe in a smaller screen, the button or the elements or the menu, mm, let's imagine the case of the menu. Maybe in a smaller screen, the seven item menu will go out of the screen. So if you do an experiment, if you have a really small screen. If you do an experiment with some participants having a 24 inches monitor, another participant having a five inches monitor, and you are measuring the time for selecting the last item in the menu, well, clearly the participants with a five inches monitor will be able to scroll to see the results. So the numbers for speed, for time that you're measuring are not really comparable between 24 and the five inches monitor. Mm? Uh, the speed of the mouse cursor could be a control variable. So you typically don't change the speed of the mouse, but if it's a, a dependent variable, maybe you won't. Uh, if it's a control variable, you want to keep the same speed for all participants. If again, if it's selecting a menu and you change the speed of the mouse, you can introduce more errors mm? or having the participant be more accurate in the selection. And so if you change that within an experiment, you can, again, make things not comparable. So you don't want to make things not comparable. You want to, to have results more aligned as possible between all your participants. Mm? So you want that all your participants receive the same experimental condition in the very same way. Mm? So all of these are control variables, but also the height of a chair could be a control variable. Mm? How comfortable one is using a computer or a system depends also what you want to, to experiment. Or the type of smartphone could be a control variable. Mm? Android versus iOS. Could be some difference in, there are some different in interaction point of view. Mm? So if you are testing something that strongly depends from the operating system, you cannot have three participants using an Android phone, and other three participants using an iOS, and other five participants using an old Windows phone. Because you cannot really then compare those results. Mm. So these are variables that happens, but they do control, either because you think about that or because it's automatically controlled, like the size of the display. Mm. But you have to be careful that every participant will receive the same treatment will undergo the same experimental condition as the other. Then we have random variables. Mm? So that is in one way the opposite of control variables. So control variables are variables that we want to control. Mm? We are control freak and we'll control everything. Mm? 
So for some things we can control that, for other things we don't really care to control them. Mm -hmm. So we can allow some variables to vary randomly because they are not really influencing the dependent variables. Mm -hmm. So for instance, a random variable, and again, this is also another kind of variables that we don't think a lot during the, the control experiment, but exist. In some cases, it could have an impact. So an example of a random variable is the gender of participants. Mm -hmm. The end size of participants using a mask or a touch screen, or the height of the participants. Mm -hmm. um, for, for some application, but or if they have eyeglasses or not. Mm -hmm. For some application, you actually don't care if you get a male, a female, or one that is one meter and 80 centimeter, uh, 1.8 meter height, or 1.7, or 1.5, or a larger smaller hand or eyeglasses or not. For other experiments, they could be important for, they could influence the dependent variable, so you want to control them. Mm -hmm. So we have these other two kinds of variables. The control variables that are variables that impact, influence the dependent variables, and you want to control them, and other things that are the random variables that you really don't care. But still they are there, they are still variables. Just you don't care what they are or not too much. Maybe you care about gender for recruiting a more representative target population, but not for measuring the dependent variables. Mm -hmm. And then you have confounding variables that are the most dangerous one, mm -hmm. if you ignore that. Uh, confounding variables are any circumstances or condition that changes systematically with an independent variable. So while the, uh, the first two are related to the dependent variable, this is related to the independent variable. Mm? And this change within, with an independent variable, and they are problematic, because it doesn't allow you to understand if the effect, if the result, that you are seeing is due to the independent variable or due to this one. Mm? So in some case, you can control the confounding variable or try to eliminate the confounding variable. In other case, you cannot really for the experimental setting. Uh, in some cases, you don't have confounding variable and it's fine, it's easier. But when you have, you can either control or accept that there are and include them in the results. So example of a confounding variable. So let's imagine that you uh, want to track a person's eyes with camera uh, in two different conditions, near and far. Mm? You want to say that the near camera, you say the near, mm, it's, I don't know, it's more precise to track the eye movement uh, um, in, um, say, with a distance of 10 centimeter with respect of 3 meter. Mm -hmm. So the precision increase with um, uh, when the, the, the distance becomes smaller. Mm -hmm. And you are actually using two cameras because you cannot use only one probably. Mm -hmm. Two cameras, one that is close to the participant, another that is far away to the participant because you don't want the participant to move around the room, change the, the height of the, of the chair, etc. Because these are, these are other variables that can impact. Mm? So you have set up a place in which you have a camera here, a camera two meters um, distance, and you are actually doing your experiment. You have the dependent variables, dependent variables, etc. But the different characteristics of the camera because you have different characteristics. One is very close, and so probably doesn't have any special for getting the uh, people, pupil mm. of the eyes. And the other is two meters uh, of distance, so you clearly need to have a different quality to get your eyes. Mm. They're not a 10 centimeter camera. Uh, 
So th they have different characteristics. And this different characteristic that they have could be a conforming variable. Because they can change the independent variable, change the result even. And but you cannot do really anything because you need different cameras to do this experiment. So you have to consider that in your analysis, just at least the list as a limitation that clearly with different camera we could have different results, but these two cameras that has these specific characteristics that maybe are standard or maybe are widely used for these kind of things, with those characteristics, with those kind of camera, independently from the specific brand and model of the camera, you can have a confounding aspect. Mm -hmm. So you don't know if the effect is given to the better characteristic one camera to the other or actually to the distance from one to the other. So again, these are things that you can either control or ignore in a way. In the previous example, can the number of values or value why? So no, no, they cannot be the, the independent, the, the confounding variable. Well, first because they are the independent variables, and there are the things that you change. So you select it to have three, five, and seven. It's not something that happens. Mm -hmm. So you are experimenting with three, five, and seven. So you can say only say the three is faster than seven. You cannot say oh no, one or two is faster than nine because you didn't experiment with nine and two. Mm -hmm. So you are in that case, limiting the space of exploration in three, five, and seven, and you can draw results only for three, five, and seven. Mm? So this, but these are things that you manipulate. You choose three, five, and seven, okay? Like here, you choose 10 centimeter and two meters. It's something that you choose. You can choose 20 centimeter and five meter. Mm? But you have no control on the characteristic of the camera because you didn't, you just buy the camera that is good for that that work, but you have no control on the, on the internal characteristics. Okay, we are actually out of time. Uh, so let's see in a few minutes in LabInf, and we will continue with hypothesis uh, next week.